first power play of the game, but while they were shorthanded, a couple of good scoring opportunities, and Jamie Ram is there to shut the door that time on number uh, 23. Vyacheslav Kadoshkin. So the Rangers, as we mentioned, Paul, get their first power play. Dmitry Zantivahin in the penalty box for two minutes. 16.37 to go in the first period. We are scoreless, so the Rangers have the puck in the Russian end. Working it behind the goal down at Langdon. On the point, Stewart and Warenko. And the pass gets between the two. The Rangers will have to regroup out of the zone. See that forechecking by Andrei Trous Tarasenko. He is the fastest player on this Russian team. You'll see him on the power play as well as killing penalties. Rangers trying to set up. Stewart and Warenka again on the point. Langdon trying to set up in front. Centering pass by Warenka, intercepted by Trazayuk. And he gets it out to center ice. Two on three, so he dumps it in behind Ram. Rangers power play during the regular season in the American Hockey League as we get a stoppage of play, ranked 12th of 16. However, they've been pretty hot lately, going 10 for 28 over the past seven games. That's 35.7% efficient, and they've been having a lot of success, thanks in part to rookie forward number 20, Jeff Nielsen. In his first season for the University of Minnesota, he leads the club in that category with seven power play goals on the season. One of the many fans here in this capacity crowd enjoying this game, and there's a good look at Jeff Nielsen. 111 left on the penalty to Zati Vahin. 15.50 to go in the first period. Samalin on the draw. And he wins it for the Russians. Nice quick shot. I don't know if Ram saw it, but then it was deflected up over his glove, and he held on. Made a pretty nice save there. He's got some impressive numbers this season, as we talked about at the top of the broadcast. The goals against average of 2.87, which ranks him fifth in the American Hockey League. And also, he's got a pretty impressive save percentage, 908. Anything over 900, of course, good. The one-timer from the point as Ram shrugs the shoulder and makes the save. He's already made three difficult saves here. We're not even five minutes into the game. Interesting to note here, during the American Hockey League regular season, you're allowed to dress 16 skaters and two goaltenders. Here, since it is an exhibition game, both coaches have elected to dress 20 skaters. So Binghamton with a pretty wide bench here. Here come the Rangers. Wah! Wow. Little fancy stick handling. Gets it into the Russian zone. It's a one-on-two. Nordstrom tries to get down in front. Wah continued to maintain possession until he was fouled. He fired it off the puck. And here's Samalek. Little stick handling job, and they'll just try and kill time off that power play. 23 seconds left in the penalty. Torpedo doing a nice job of penalty killing here. Taking a lot of time off. Little that forechecking call. by Starostenko, and Wa gives the Russians some fits here. Wa did not know the puck was between his skates, and then the Russians take it away. Five seconds to go on the power play. That should just about do it as the Rangers take over in their own zone back. Dativahin out of the box. And Shcherbakov sends it around the boards. 14 and a half to go in the first period. The Torpedo and the Binghamton Rangers are scoreless. Ram will play it behind his net, and the puck goes off the left post. Ram almost got caught out of position. Stick save on the shot by Gorshkov. And here come the Rangers. Two on two breakout. McLaughlin. And offside by Jernander. Jernander, one of the real unsung heroes for the Rangers this season. There's a shot of Mike McLaughlin, who returned to the lineup a couple of weeks ago after suffering a dislocated shoulder. McLaughlin, originally a Buffalo Sabres draft, Vic signed as a free agent two seasons ago, has uh, really panned out to be a pretty good prospect in the Rangers organization. Here you'll see the save, by Ram. save from Ram. I think it caught the top of his stick and deflected off in the corner. Tough way to make a save, but Ram has stopped everything that's been thrown at him so far, all not five a, shots. Not a lot of lumber above the elbow, but he found <laughs> a way to make it work. And going down on the play, it looked as though there could have been a trip on McLaughlin, but no call. And the Rangers work it free back into the Russian zone. Skolpsev can't control, but does tip it ahead. Carnes with a very hard hit. As Warenka behind the net, he'll try and set things up. Scoreless game with just over 13 and a half to go in the first period. Here's Carnes. Sends it in behind Cherbikov. 
Mentioned has the puck go through. Mentioned the fact, Paul, that the Rangers have 20 skaters in the lineup tonight. Where do they all come from, you ask? Well, the Rangers recalled Andy Silverman from the Charlotte Checkers in the East Coast Hockey League. Also, Scott Malone back after a brief stay with Birmingham. Dave, our longest stretch of play without a whistle, and then all of a sudden, there's a stoppage. 13-14 to go in the first period. The Binghamton Rangers nothing, and Torpedo Yugoslav nothing. We'll be back after this message. It's already been a tough night for Jamie Ram. He has been a busy camper. Here comes Scott Malone trying to work it into the zone, and Cherbikov will play it behind the Russian net. Roth failed to keep in, so Stewart tries to and sends it back in. Behind the net, Mikash. Centering pass for Raw. Can't get it to go. Rangers applying some pressure here. And finally, the Russians will clear the zone. Great chemistry. We've seen it all season from Wah, Duncan, and Makash. Zena with some good speed, but Malone tips it away. Loose puck in front, and then Ram watches it go behind the net. Good hard check by Stanko. And the puck flips back towards Ram once again. This starts a stretch of 10 games in 14 days for Torpedo Jaroslavl doing their U.S. tour. People say, how can they take a break in the middle of their season? We'll talk about that next whistle. Stewart behind the net. Duncanson tries to chip it out. While poking at it. And it is out of the zone, so Russia will have to regroup. Malone. And here come the Rangers. Duncanson flicks it into center. And Trasayuk sends it back into the Rangers' zone. So far, the Russian speed hasn't given Binghamton any nightmares. Binghamton with a very solid defensive team, and they seem to be shutting the door pretty effectively. On a play here in the neutral zone here as we reach the midway point of the first period. Chervikov will play it around the boards. Zeeban works it up. And here comes Tarasenko. The speedster has it go off, and the Rangers' Hiller coming in, and he has it uh, poked away. And it's back again in center ice. The way they're skating between those blue lines, Dave, there may not be much ice left. Five, uh, two shots on goal in favor of Russia. Jamie Ram stopping all five shots. Here comes Wah. The Rangers are clear onside. Centering pass intended for Kudinov, but he could not get a stick on it. And here we go on a breakaway for Artashov. Shot saved by Ram. The rebound is loose in front and sticked aside by Kudinov behind the net. So the Rangers survive a scare. Artashov got behind that one, too, putting all his weight into the shot, and Jamie Ram came up big from point blank range. Here comes Hillary's on sides. Centering pass for Warenka does not get through. Ten and a half to go in the first period. The Rangers and Torpedo are scoreless. Trevikov has spent much of his night uh, just sticking the puck from behind the goal. Good fork checking job by the Russians. And Ram has to once again come up with a, an easy save. Coming up on the 10 minute mark to go in the first period. Again, we are still scoreless. A couple of real good opportunities though for the torpedo. Worskov works it in, scoops out. And now Kadoshkin, we saw how hard he worked on that first uh, shift for the Russians. Nordstrom. Rangers having all kinds of problems trying to get it out of the zone. Rangers also with one of the best defensive teams in the American Hockey League. Four NHL caliber defensemen on this roster, according to sources with the New York Rangers front office. And they're being tested right here, Dave. Here comes McLaughlin. Intercepted. And then the Russians will have to come out again. Here's Kadoshkin. Behind Ram. Sticks it up the boards. The Rangers cannot get the puck out of their own end. Having a real difficult time here. Exactly right. Finally, Warenko flips it down into the neutral zone and right back in again. Boy, at some point here, Ram is probably going to pick up that puck and throw it down himself. Moranka gets some help there from Jernander, but Binghamton, all they can do is get it out to center ice before Torpedo takes over again. And here they come. Kazakiewicz with an opportunity, but shoots it wide. Under nine minutes to go in the first period. We are scoreless. The Rangers and Torpedo Yugoslavo. Stewart works it up the boards, and again, the Rangers get it out to the neutral zone, and it's chipped back into the Rangers zone. 
good enough. Sends it into the left of Chervikov. Nice hard hit by Stewart. But again, it does not produce much as the puck comes back to center ice. Eric Karn seeing a lot of ice time here in the opening period. He is kind of the seventh defenseman for the Rangers in and out of the lineup as need be. Trying to make a name for himself here. Seeing a lot of ice time in a game like that. Eight minutes to go now in the first period. And we've had quite a flow here of about four and a half minutes of uninterrupted action. Here come the Rangers, Staros Stanko. And unfortunately for Jeff Nielsen, he could not control. And back come the Russians. It's a two-on-two -two and an offsides as Alexander Zibin tried to get it in the offensive zone. That is quite a fast break Torpedo has, too, coming out of their own zone like rocket. Seven minutes and 50 seconds left in the opening period. Take a look at those jerseys, really sharp uniforms. Always nice to get that international flavor, as we mentioned. And we do have a message on how you can pick up your Torpedo Yaroslavl Russian merchandise with a score. Torpedo nothing and the Rangers nothing. 7.50 left in the opening period of play. Let's take a look at how you can order your Russian merchant. A good solid performance from goaltender Jamie Ram who had to be sharp on this shot. Moving in, Artishov let the one-timer go and he really got behind it. Putting his weight into that shot. Ram making the save. He's faced six shots. Shut the door on all six and uh, Paul will mention the fact that you will be able to find out how to order some Russian merchandise a little later. Absolutely, and you know, uh, getting back to the shots on goal, Ram has uh, made six saves, five of which have been uh, pretty difficult. He's had a tough time this evening. Playing very well, though. He's responded very well in every situation he's been thrown into. As a matter of fact, he's got the only Binghamton Rangers shutout of the season, a 26-save performance in Glens Falls, a 4-0 win over the Adirondack Red Wings. And not much in support. The Rangers with only two shots on goal thus far. 7-17 to go in the opening period, and the Torpedo and Binghamton Rangers are scoreless. That's the front line out there for the Rangers, Duncanson, Makash, and Wah, and those guys have been on fire as of late. Torpedo Yaroslavl, the second-place team in the Russian Elite League. What they do is play 30 games, take a four-week break, and finish the other 30 games in the remainder of their season. That four-week break is given so the players can play in the World Championships, World Junior Championships, or join the national team during an Olympic season. You may see the NHL experiment with something like that if they indeed let their premier players compete in the Winter Olympic Games. So so, torpedo in the middle of a four-week break. If you want to call it a break, they're playing 10. I was just going to say that's a heck of a, low, a road <laughs> trip for a break. I'm sure these guys will have major jet lag when they get back. Here comes Torpedo working it into the zone. Loose puck uh, picked up by Audeshaw. And apparently there'll be a whistle, and it looks like a penalty on the Rangers. What do you think about that, though? There's been a lot of talk about the premier NHL players competing in the Winter Olympic Games. It's only going to be good for the sport and the visibility. To be honest with you, Dave, I don't like it very much. <laughs> but we'll have a chance to talk about some Russian merchandise as the Torpedo Yuroslav are here in Binghamton. Let's send it downstairs. Let's Scott go. Malone in his rookie season from the University of New Hampshire hauls down one of the Russian forwards, gets a holding penalty as a result, and Torpedo goes on the power play. For the second time tonight, 0 for 1 with the man advantage. Still a scoreless tie here in the opening period. Of course, not too late to order some of that torpedo merchandise. Perhaps a late Christmas gift is in the offing. Just over six and a half to go in the first period. Here comes uh, Somalin. In front, hits the right post, and in a goal! The Russian torpedo have broken out on chop. One to nothing. Jamie Rambo unable to handle the rebound. Vladimir Somalin gets the goal. And the Torpedo obviously real happy that their hard work has paid off. A power play goal from Samalin. He found that gift on his stick. You mentioned Christmas. Well, a holiday present for Samalin. The shot from Artishov rings off that right post, and Ram was way out to play the angle. As a result, the short side was left open. See it from ice level coming right into your home as the first shot goes off the post. The rebound. Look at that gift. You couldn't find a better holiday present. And the Russians have a 1-0 lead. And back the other way, the Rangers score. Jim Hiller in the open net as Alexei Chervikov was caught out of position. So the Rangers quickly strike to tie this game at 1 after no scoring through the first 13-plus minutes. With 6.25 left in the opener, Jim Hiller picks up the opening goal for the Rangers. All right, so let's recap these two quick goals. Samalin at 13.25 and then Hiller at 13.35. So the Rangers do strike back quickly. 
And we've got a 1-1 tie here at Binghamton, and the fans are rocking. That shot from Hiller into the open net. I guess much like the gift that Samalin found, Langdon was stopped on the first shot. Jim Hiller buried the rebound, and it's 1-1. Those goals coming just 10 seconds apart. Hiller, and it, it brings this crowd to life, too, Paul. Hiller with 11 goals in 28 games during this American Hockey League season. He started his professional career with Wayne Gretzky in the Los Angeles Kings, was part of the Paul Coffey trade going to Detroit, then was claimed off waivers by the New York Rangers last October, where he seemingly found a home with the New York Rangers, was assigned to Binghamton for, at first, what was thought a two-week conditioning period, and he hasn't left since, but still has managed to keep a very positive frame of mind. So the two teams trade goals, icing here against the Torpedo. We'll get the complete scoring recap for you momentarily, and all of a sudden, as you said, this Broome County Veterans Coliseum crowd has been brought to life. A sellout crowd here in Binghamton, New York, and what has been a very entertaining first period. Torpedo Yaroslavl, for our fans that may not be familiar with the Russian Elite League, you can kind of flip that. If you were talking about North American hockey, it would be called the Yaroslavl Torpedo, because Yaroslav is the city in Russia, Torpedo the team nickname. Yaroslav is a city of 300,000 people about two hours northeast of Moscow. There are eight time zones in Russia, and 35-hour bus rides are not uncommon from what I understand. So the elite league, a real tough way to make a living. Smith against Trasayuk on the draw. Chipping it backhanded was Smith to the point and Silverman unable to control and Ram will have to field the puck. Barenko being forechecked. Nice steal by Tarasenko and nothing comes of it although here comes Trasayuk. And we saw off and Back the other way for the Rangers, McLaughlin. It's a two-on-two two if he hurries, and nice job there by number four, Krasokin, to tie up the play. Just over five minutes to go in the first period. The Binghamton Rangers, nothing, and Torpedo Yunoslav, nothing. Oh, one, nothing, nothing? Well, how about 1-1, one, one, Dave? <laughs> Those goals were just so quick, they, like, flashed by my mind. Samalin for the Russians, Hiller for the Rangers. 1-1 uh, one, tie here in the opening period. Behind the net. And the Rangers working hard, but unable to get an opportunity out of this possession time in Russian ice. Up along the boards, Nordstrom tries to keep it in, but he's unable to. And here come the Torpedo. Zibin. He's got Tarasenko coming in on Ram. Nice save, and then he covers up. That's a great save. Ram goes down, stacks the pans, it hits him in the midsection, and this is still a tie hockey game. 4.36 to go in the first period. The Rangers won the Torpedo one. We'll be back on the Russians are coming hockey tour. Another great save from Jamie Ram putting on uh, an exhibition in an exhibition game for a national television audience going down, stacking the pass, taking that shot from the crafty captain of Torpedo, Andre Tarasenko. Jamie Ram played at Michigan Tech under Newell Brown, who recruited him for the first two seasons. Brown now serving as head coach of the Adirondack Red Wings for the past couple of seasons. Four and a half minutes to go in the first period. The Rangers and Torpedo tied at one. The two teams exchanging goals within 10 seconds just a bit earlier. Nordstrom keeps it in. The Rangers trying to work it around behind the net from Cherbikov. Working very hard in the corner, Starostenko. Again, nothing comes of it, although Fiorentino chipped it back in behind the net. Here comes Samalin. One-on-one -on -one against Nordstrom, who does a nice job to pinch him off. And I'll tell you what, if you're the Rangers and that's a one-on-one -on -one going against you, Nordstrom's the guy you want to be that one guy. Centering pass intended for Kostraman, and Ram has to cover up. So the goals early on, it was uh, Samalian, uh, or Samalin at 13.25 for the Torpedo. Artashov on the assist, and then the Rangers tied it up at 13.35. Hiller from Langdon and Stanislavko. And here's Ram coming up big again. Another save in front. It was deflected by Fiorentino Nielsen. They're a hot biscuit in front, but Jamie Ram takes the heat off by forcing a stoppage of play. 23 years of age. He's actually one year older than three-year pro Corey Hirsch. Ram in his rookie season. Puck sent out to center ice. Eight shots for the Torpedo, five for the Rangers, but at this point, any kind of loose puck in relation to Ram could be considered a dangerous threat, the way the Torpedo have been swarming. Talking about Here come the Rangers, they're two on one, but they can't hurry. And Cherbikov will play it back behind the board, so the Rangers unable to take uh, advantage on that rush. 
I was going to say, talking about Corey Hirsch, she stayed very busy during this holiday season, and I'm not talking about traveling to see family and friends uh, during the Christmas break, but he was very busy signing sticks and pennants and autographs. Uh, Corey Hirsch, uh, a source of Christmas gifts, I guess you'd say, during this holiday season. Poor centering pass by the Rangers results in the puck coming all the way back into the Rangers' own. As you know, Hirsch probably one of the most well-known American Hockey League players. Of course, everybody down in the New York metropolitan area knows him as the outstanding prospect with the New York Rangers. Played for the Canadian Olympic team, of course. Along with Rangers forward is Johnny Verwa. They brought home silver medals from Lily Hunter. Here's the turnover, and Makash tries to hustle it up. Waits for his teammates, and it's a three-on-three. -three. Langdon behind the net, looking in front for Verwa. Centering pass, go! six-foot, three-inch goaltender, Alexei Cherbakov had trouble getting down. That's a problem when you're a big stand-up goaltender. Couldn't get down very quickly, and we'll get a good look at it here. Darren Langdon working behind the nets. The Rangers enforcer also has pretty soft hands and good hockey instinct. Watt took that shot, and as you see, Cherbakov had a bit of trouble getting down. You'll get it from ice level here. Langdon with a centering feed, Cherbakov down. Then it's too late. The puck trickles into the far side, and Johnny Foy, a very prolific goal scorer at the American Hockey League level, gives the Rangers their first lead of the night. So the Rangers lead Torpedo 2-1. to one. The goal coming at 17-21. Foy from Langdon. And for Wa on the season, 34 games, 19 goals, 17 points for 36 assists. And as you mentioned just a couple of moments ago, Dave, before the goal, he was a member of that 1994 Canadian Olympic team. Last year, he missed four or five weeks of the American Hockey League season. Still scored 41 goals for the Binghamton Rangers on pace to uh, reach at least that number here this year. A three-time All-American while with the University of Maine Black Bears. And why at 5'10", 180 pounds, did a good job fighting off the check of uh, Eugenie Schaaf. Aldeban in front, and as a result, the Rangers have a two-to-one lead. Just over two minutes to go now in the first period, and Ram has to play it behind his net. It's been a very busy middle and second half of this first period after what was a very slow start. And Carnes went hard into the boards. Slow getting up, but he's going to be okay. Paul, from the take-it-for-what-it's-worth statistical file, Seven of Binghamton's 11 losses during the regular season have come when they led after the first period of play. With 141 left, Rangers are up 2-1. We'll see if they can hold on because you know the Torpedo will be swarming with their speed. They will not give the Rangers any chance to sit on this lead. That's one of those statistics that just doesn't make any sense when leading after the first period. They actually have a very poor record. Dave Smith had tripped up uh, Andre Tarasenko at the blue line. Tarasenko gets up, chips at the puck in between the circles, and the Rangers will clear it out again. The crowd almost thought that Tarasenko had drawn a penalty, but the officials thought otherwise. That puck now chipped up along the boards. Smith can't keep it in, and here's Tarasenko again. Russians on a three-on-three. -three. Shot goes wide by Gorskov. One minute to go in the first period. Rangers on top of Torpedo, 2-1. to one. Here's a chance for Malone. He fires, pass saved by Chernikov. The rebound, the Rangers cannot control. Looks like there'll be a penalty call. Komisarov of the Russian Torpedo will get the call. So the Rangers with Ram out of the net. 35 seconds to go in the first period. Here's Smith. Offside's call. Sean McCosh broke it a bit too soon, Dave. A late whistle along that line, too. Uh, the whistle for the offsides, not for the penalty, because the Russian team hadn't gained control yet. Sean McCosh shakes that one off. One of the veterans on this club, veteran leaders, a very good mix of veterans who lead the younger prospects, and each player knows his roles. Guys like Jeff Nielsen or Matthias Nordstrom, Joby Messi, look to these guys. They've been around the league. They know the secrets. They know how to avoid controversy and adversary uh, during the season. Uh, Sean McCosh, one of the best at his position here in the American Hockey League, also played with the LA Kings organization. Logged four games uh, back during the riots. You'll remember the Rodney King riots in Los Angeles. Sean McCosh just happened to be in Los Angeles at that time. He's got some interesting slash scary stories about that experience. At 15.32, defenseman Oleg Komisarov goes into the box for holding. So the Rangers, one for two on the power play, will go at it once again. Here's Nordstrom on the point. Centering pass, goal! 
Craig Duncanson has given the Rangers a 3-1 lead with 10 seconds to go in the first period. Deflected in front. It looked like it might have went off Duncanson's skate. No intent, though, of course, if you intend to kick a goal in, it does not count. It would be waved off. We'll get a good look at it here on the replay. Matthias Nordstrom starts from the top of the circle, and indeed, Duncanson got his stick on it, not his skate. So a great play from the oldest member of the Binghamton Rangers, team captain Craig Duncanson, at 27 years of age with just 10 seconds left in the opening period of play. Gives the Rangers a 3-1 lead. Duncanson not known for his goal-scoring ability, only his sixth goal of the season. Duncanson! Outstanding playmaker, really showed the tools with the stick. And anytime you can get a late goal as the first period winds down, you can use that as a momentum builder to start the next period. Both teams will start period number two, skating five aside. So after falling behind one to nothing, the Rangers score three unanswered goals to take a 3-1 lead into the locker room after 20 minutes of play. The Rangers, two of three, working the puck out of their zone. We did see stretches of this in the first period. Yeah, a nice forecheck established here by oh, yeah. And fanning on the shot was uh, Samalin in the slot. And it's costly, because here come the Rangers, three on two. Smith across, and McLaughlin can't bank it home. Another centering pass, sticked aside by Chervikov, behind the goal. And the Russians work it free, back into center ice. This was one of the most effective Rangers lines early in the season. It, uh, Features Dave Smith, Ken Jernander, and Mike McLaughlin, but McLaughlin dislocated his shoulder, and these guys are reunited for just the second game since McLaughlin's return. Point man Sobolev. Here's a point shot by Martinov, sticked aside by Ram, and the Rangers will break out. McLaughlin just fires it down out of the zone, and Chivikov plays it forward. Both teams change on the fly. Here comes Kostramin. Intercepted by the Rangers, and Hiller works it free back in between the blue lines. Hiller intercepts. Three on three, on sides. He left it for a McLaughlin, who was in the middle of a chase. Centering pass for Langdon in front, stick to side by Cherbikov. Just over 17 and a half to go in the second period. The Rangers lead the torpedo three to one. All goals coming in the first period. The torpedo changing on the fly. Down the left wing. Skupsev having all kinds of problems. Nordstrom steals. Good forechecking job by Gorshkov behind the goal. And Langdon trying to get it out, but he cannot. Centering pass for Gorshkov in front. And Jamie Ram does what he does best. Holds on to the puck. 17.06 to go in the second period. Our score, the Rangers 3, the Torpedo 1. Back with more of the Russians are coming hockey tour after this. With the edge in the faceoff department, shots on goal dead even at 9 apiece. Jamie Ram coming up with 8 saves on those 9 shots. And the Rangers, as we mentioned, with a 2-goal lead. That at one point, Torpedo with a shots on goal advantage of 7-2 to two early on. Here comes the torpedo. Eubin in front. Nice pad saved by Ram off to the right side, and the Rangers work it up into center ice. Back for the Russians, and then the Rangers will try to work it back into their zone as they set up a play. Three to one. The Rangers on top of Torpedo Yudoslav. Here comes a streaking Sean Makash, but uh, unable to control, then loses his skate, and that will break up the Rangers' play. Andy Silverman seeing limited ice time here tonight. Recalled from the Charlotte Checkers, as we mentioned, in the East Coast Hockey League. He'll take over in his own zone. That's Silverman in the corner. Here come the Rangers, a three-on-three three if they hurry. Digging down the right side, Makash. Drop pass. And the Rangers unable to really get a play out of it, although Makash does streak there behind Cherbikov, and goaltender does a great job getting it out. Coming down in the center is Zatibahin, and a great save by Jamie Ram. That might have rang off the left post. Jamie Ram getting a little help there, if that's the case. Well, the post is a goaltender's best friend, and if the Soviets hurry, it'll be a three-on-one. They tip it in. Trasayuk on the right side, and intercepted by Malone. Does a great job, and then Ram sticks it back behind the net. Broken play. I think the torpedo forwards were surprised to see just one defenseman back. As you mentioned, it easily could have been a three-on-one. Here's Scott Malone. He's paired back there with Darcy Warenka. Play in the neutral zone. Starostenko carries in. Tries to drop it back for Warenka. But again, the play broken up by the Russians. Streaking down is Tarasenko. What speed? Tripped up. No call. Malone controls. 
Just over 15 minutes to go in the second period. The Rangers three, Torpedo Yuslavo one. There's a shot by Zibin. And again, there's the man, Jimmy Ram, coming up big. Tarasenko, who was taken down by Waranka on that play, a member of the Russian Olympic team last year in Lillehammer, Norway. We mentioned Jean Ibrouin, Corey Hirsch, who brought back silver medals. Well, Tarasenko seeing some time with the Russian team. We'll check out this save from Jamie Ram. Let's see exactly what kept that puck out of the net. Was it Ram's pads, Ram's stick, or the goalpost? It was the goalpost, indeed. So it went off the left pipe. A goaltender's best friend, as they say, and this is still a two-goal lead for the Rangers as a result. I think Jamie Ram owes that goalpost a Christmas present. Second goalpost of the night. However, the first one ended up being a goal as Samalin buried the rebound. Just under 15 minutes to play here in the second period. The Rangers three, Torpedo one. Back behind the Ranger net, Warenka. And he plays it out. You see Starostenko has lost his helmet, but he will continue to play as the Rangers try to work it into the zone. And Starostenko has the puck. Hard work does pay off. And then the Torpedo chips it out into the neutral zone. Torpedo struck first, and then the Rangers came back with three goals, including two on the power play. And after one period, it was three to one. That's where we stand now. Craig Duncanson had an interesting comment between periods in that interview with Roger Neal. He said, we don't want to play to the Russians' strength. So Binghamton comes out, plays their own game. Yeah, they give up the first goal, but basically they have taken Russia's speed out of the game. And with just over 14 minutes to play in the second period, it appears that Torpedo is going to be an icing call and back to touch for the Rangers' Andy Silverman. 14.02 to go in the second period. Our score, the Rangers 3 and the Torpedo 1. Back with more on the right. Hey, Nikolaev, he was named head coach of Torpedo back in 1980, so his 14th season behind the bench. And Gorshkov wins the draw from Smith. It looks like there'll be another faceoff only this time in the Ranger end. Michael Stewart in his third season out of Michigan State University, a first-round draft pick of the New York Rangers back in 1990. We've bragged about this Rangers defense all season long, yet on opening night on September 30th, five of the six defensemen in the lineup that night were rookies. Darcy Waranka was the only player with any experience. Then the NHL lockout. Five guys come down, including Barry Richter, Pete Fiorentino, Matias Nordstrom, Joby Messier, and the guy we just saw, Michael Stewart, to really solidify that Binghamton defense. Just over 13 and a half to go in the second period. The Rangers one and to, or Rangers three to a paid all one. As we just check that score momentarily. Stewart flicks it in. Cherbakov plays it and cannot control. Good check along the right board by Smith. And the Rangers are unable to take advantage. Breaking down the right side with Skopsev. But uh, again, the Rangers getting back. Andy Silverman, as you said before, Dave, his first game up here. And He's gotten a lot of ice time. I guess Joby Messier we have not seen tonight. We certainly expected him. We'll have to check on an injury update a little bit later on. Barry Richter not in uniform as I look down toward the entrance to the Rangers dressing room. We knew about that. A couple of bumps and bruises. Shot wide. Then the rebound off to the side of the net. Loose puck in front. And a nice job by Jamie Ram to cover up. Rather unorthodox Ram had lost save, his stick. But, uh, Oh. Doing everything he can to keep the puck out of the net. Lost his stick, hauled it in with a blocker. We mentioned a couple bumps and bruises on Barry Richter. Nothing to be concerned about, though. He's expected back in the lineup tomorrow when the Rangers travel to the Hershey Park Arena. Another save from Jamie Ram. Tough one to make, looking for the short side. Number 15, Alexander Skopsev. And there you'll get it from ice level right into your living room as Ram reaches out of that blocker and... Holds on, so a face-off coming up inside the Rangers zone with 12.55 left in our second period. Yatoslav Kedolshkin, a hard worker who uh, really has put uh, a lot of pressure on the Rangers early on in this game, was right there parked in the slot waiting for Ram to cough up the puck. Rangers win the draw, just under 13 minutes to go in the second period. 3-1, to one, the Rangers over to Pedro Yuroslav. And some freewheeling here in center ice. Haler in the intended man on that play. And back come the other way. Russians trying to keep it in. Chaldivin really working hard along the corner. And a face-off in the Rangers' own. This game here tonight starts a stretch of five games in the final six days of this year for the Rangers. 
And we'll head to a break right now as the Rangers lead Torpedo 3-1. You're watching the... ...up and sent back down the other way. Rangers forward Darren Langdon, who's good to head to the bench in favor of a change here, has been playing exceptionally well, not only here tonight, but over the past uh, seven or ten games very well. Good fortune checking job by Wah. Tarasenko, the captain of this Torpedo team, takes it in. Nice drop for Trazayuk. Good move, centers in front, and nobody home. Then a backhander, Ram comes up with it, and Mukas will clear the zone. The Russian torpedo appear to be gaining some life here, although they don't have a goal. Ram comes up with a stick save, then the rebound, swat on the side. The torpedo definitely taking some of the blood out of the Binghamton Rangers here, who have that three to one lead, but appear to be a bit asleep. Jamie Ram's last start in goal for the Rangers was last Wednesday, a 4-2 loss in Glens Falls, that fourth goal coming into the empty net from Adirondack, but he's looking to get back on the winning track and playing quite well so far. Already a very impressive 18 shots on goal from the Russians. Pass intercepted by Wah. Spins. Here's Warenka. Fires wide. Warenka and Malone on the points. And back comes Torpedo. And Waranka shifts it back in again. Ten and a half to go in the second period. The Rangers three and the Torpedo one. Down right wing, Kostremen. Good hard check by Silverman and a little bit shaky was Kostremen. Four goals scored here tonight. Three by the Rangers, one by the Russians. All came in the first period. Again, we saw a slow start to the opening period and then a quick finish. And now a slow start to the second period. Hopefully a quick finish. There have been no penalties here in the second period, Dave, and the Rangers were two of three on the power play in the first period. We mentioned at the top of the broadcast that the Torpedo now a two-on-one. Here's Otashov. Fakes and then shoots. Ram comes up with a save, the loose puck, and he falls on it. 9.53 to go in the second period, and Ram still has himself a two-goal advantage. I'll tell you what, that is a great move by Artishov as he tried to freeze the goaltender. The only problem, Jamie Ram wasn't taking the bait. Watch Artishov hesitate as he winds up, fakes the shot, you freeze the goaltender there, and then score the goal, theoretically, okay? Jamie Ram just didn't take the bait. Artishov didn't plan on that, so Ram makes another big save, sprawled out, and he stops almost everything that's been thrown at him here so far, stopping 18 of 19 shots. Andy Silverman, the lone defenseman back on the two-on-one, forced the shooter to take the shot. We've talked a lot about Jamie Ram, but it's hard not to talk about a goaltender who's playing this well. Fuck in the neutral zone. Fired in. Ram, stick save again. Leaves it off for Silverman. Fires it up the left boards. And back into the neutral zone. Poked by Starostenko. Tries to get in. And indeed, the Rangers get a shot out of it. The former Soviet Union, obviously, when you talk about politics, has undergone a major change. Well, the, the Soviet military was heavily involved in the Russian Elite League. Now with the demise of the Soviet Union, the Russian Elite League now going to more private ownership, and they're facing some of the same problems that owners here in the National Hockey League or American Hockey League are facing, and that is raising enough revenue on a private ownership basis to pay salaries, to pay for team travel expenses, all kinds of things that come up. And from what I understand, Torpedo Yaroslav will get some of its financial backing from a Russian car maker but the tour is also designed to help raise funds. And there's a loose puck in front, and the torpedo finally work it free, and the Rangers will have to regroup. Jamie Ram, nine saves in the first period, then will make it eight saves in the first period, now ten in the second. He has been a very busy man. Remember those days when the Soviet military controlled hockey and some of the great Olympic teams they provided? Dave Smith trying to get to that loose puck cannot, and the... Torpedo work at three behind the goal. Digging for it is Jernander. Sticked away by the Torpedo, and they come out on a two-on-two. -two. Nice poke check by Smith as uh, Kadoshkin had tried to come in. McLaughlin digging. Here come the Rangers. Nice back pass intended for Smith. Can't get a good shot off. Back comes Torpedo. Jernander handcuffs Smith, or that may have been the Rangers' fourth goal. He was left alone in front. Kadoshkin stopped by Ram. A little bit of sloppy play here as both teams go end to end. Fiorentino works it up. His stick breaks and the blade goes flying back to the range of blue line. You know the funny thing about that? You see it a lot these days where the blade comes separated from the aluminum shaft. The problem with that play? Fiorentino uses a wooden stick. <laughs> <laughs> and there lays the blade at center ice. 
Just under eight minutes to go in the second period. The Rangers three, Chirapato one. Down the right ring, Starostenko. Pass intercepted and thrown back into center zone. Personally, I'm a wooden stick kind of guy. You see those guys messing around with the torches and the glue and the aluminum shafts. Give me a good ham and egg defenseman like Fiorentino who uses a wooden stick any day. And he has a vowel that ends his last name, so you know I got a little made. <laughs> Datino, Fiorentino. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll share some pasta after this one's over. <laughs> Just under seven and a half to go in the second period. The Rangers three and Chirapato one. All four goals scored in the first period. Silverman has some trouble holding up the uh, Russian forwards. And in fact, the Chirapato with a deflection unable to convert. Ram staying on his feet, doing a nice job. Backhander by Zibin and the Rangers come back the other way. Could have been a penalty. Three on three, Rangers hurry, and the pass intercepted back the other way. Then Stewart takes possession at the red line. He'll have to wait for the Rangers to get on sides and then flips it in. The Rangers have only tested Russian goaltender Alexei Chervikov with three shots here in the second period. you got to wonder how long Jamie Ram can keep playing this style with all the work he's seen. And you know, it was earlier in the first period where the Rangers only had two shots. Here's a two on two. Ram, nice glove save. The rebound behind the net. Wide open net and a goal. Alexander Zibin has brought the torpedo back to within three to two. And Paul, as I just started to allude to, there's only so much that Jamie Ram can do, and sure enough, he's beaten there. This is now a one-goal hockey game. 6.33 left in the second. Rangers up 3-2. You're watching the Russians are coming hockey tour from Binghamton, New York. At the Broome County Memorial Veterans Coliseum, the torpedo have come back to within 3-2, and Jamie Ram having all kinds of problems. Looking over his left shoulder, watching speedy forward Andre Tarasenko circle the Ranger net and then throw that pass right out in front. Goal slid home by Alexander Zeben, and this now is a one-goal hockey game. Rangers trailed 1-0, scored three unanswered goals to take a 3-1 lead into the locker room after the first 20 minutes of play, and now that is the first goal here in the second period. Zeben's goal at 13:27. Ironically, Sabalin's goal, which opened the scoring tonight, came at 13:25 of the first period. We'll see if the pattern holds up and the Rangers score three in a row. It'll be a breakaway for Savalin. He's in all alone against Ram. And a nice pass save, but a penalty coming up against Binghamton. Wow, you won't see that too often. That was a breakaway rush from number 28, Vladimir Savalin, who had that goal in the first period, but the teammate of his that was jumping up on the play, Roman Kostraman, hauled down the Lone Rangers defenseman that was trying to take away the angles. So instead of getting a breakaway shot, the Russians are actually going to find themselves shorthanded because of this play here. Jean-Yves Waugh tried to take away the angle, and as you see, was clearly hauled down. You see, I thought Waugh's stick had come up high, and maybe he had tripped up himself, but you're correct. Obviously, the, the officials saw a call against Kostremin, and uh, he gets two minutes for interference. He was the reason that Waugh hit the ice in the first place. 5.55 to go in the second period. The Rangers three and the Torpedo two. Here come the Rangers on the power play. They are two of three on the night. Two minutes for Rangers work it in, intercepted by Martinov, and the Russians clear the zone. Rangers have been beaten for three shorthanded goals against in the month of December alone. They've got to be wary of that fact, especially with a very speedy Russian team like this. 123 to go at the Rangers power play. Here's Waugh. He's got Duncanson on the right side, but can't get it to him. Stick handles, now throws it behind the net for Duncanson. Chips it back. Good enough. And the Russians try to clear and cannot. And then they do. Still, Paul, just three shots on goal for the Rangers here in the second period, and half the power play is over, as you see. Here comes Duncanson. Drop pass for Nordstrom uh, was a bit awry, and the Rangers have to regroup again. Nielsen takes it in down the right side. Varenka on the point. Here comes Stewart. He fires wide. Rebound. Nielsen can't get it to go. Stewart fakes the shot, and he should have taken it, Dave. Jeff Nielsen was set up in front. They had the right idea, but you're right. Stewart probably would have been better off taking the nice low shot looking for any type of deflection in front. We mentioned earlier Jeff Nielsen leads the Rangers with seven power play goals, and he's the one guy who really sets up well in front, causing problems for opposing goaltenders. Lead pass for Starostanko goes awry, but the Rangers do control in the torpedo zone. 15 seconds left on the power play. Waranka, good enough. 
Down low, here's Tarasenko, can't get anything going. And again, the torpedo whips it out. That should just about do it for the Rangers' power play as a result, two seconds left. And now returning, Roman Kostroman, five on five situation with exactly four minutes to play here in the second period. Alexander Skopsev with a nice clearing play as the Ranger power play had ticked down. 3.50 to go in the second period. The Rangers three and the Torpedo two. There's Tarasenko. Lead pass down the left wing. Zeeban trying to beat Waranka to the puck, but cannot. Centering pass intercepted by Waranka. Banks it off the boards, and then it's sent back in. Waranka having all kinds of fits back there behind the net. In front, then Tarasenko on the doorstep. Ram covers up. 3.29 to go in the second period. The Rangers 3, the Torpedo 2. Back with more of Russians are coming hockey after the nine left in the second period of play. Stewart with that shot. With some help in front, Jeff Nielsen from the right side was tied up at the last possible moment. A nice defensive play there by Alexei Amelin. And this is still a one-goal hockey game, Paul. The Torpedo leading in shots on goal, 22-14. to 14, And that's one thing the head coach always says. If you're going to shoot the puck, make sure it's on goal. Back behind the net for the Rangers. Smith works it free. Little give and go, and then loses control. Kazakiewicz for Torpedo. Back behind the net. Chasing with Zinin. Kazakiewicz in front, but uh, the pass intercepted by Smith, and here come the Rangers. Three on two. Down the right side, and the Rangers cannot get anything going here. Trailer is Silverman. And the Torpedo intercept. Back in front now. Smith can't get it going with the backhand, and then it's whipped around up the left boards. Here comes Zativahin. Little yeah. give and go, and he scores! Yeah. Dimitri Zativahin has tied the game. The Torpedo have come back from a two-goal deficit. It's now 3-3. Seesaw battle at the arena. The Russians had the 1-0 lead, as we mentioned. Binghamton battled back, and then really fell into a bit of a shell to start the second period. The lone defenseman back, Scott Malone, victimized. He tried to step up there, gambled and lost. He didn't win that battle, and the puck sent into the short side. Jamie Ram, nothing he could do about it. He goes from post to post. Mike McLaughlin didn't have the legs to get back. It was Scott Malone, the lone defenseman, and we've got a 3-3 game on our hands with 2.39 left in the second period of play. Interesting. Three goals scored by the Russians and X number of assists given on those plays. No defenseman has a point for the Russians. And this season, in the first 30 regular season games for Torpedo's uh, Elite League schedule, no Russian defenseman has more than six points on the season. So we're tied at three apiece. Dmitry Zantivahin ties it at 17.41 of the second period. He's in his 11th year at age 30, the oldest player on this hockey club. He only had three goals and five assists in 30 games this year over an elite league competition. Graham covers up and there'll be a face-off. I mentioned the lack of scoring this season in the first 30 regular season games from Torpedo Jarl Slavl. One guy that comes to mind when you talk about Russians and you talk about points, of course, is Sergei Zubov, who developed his skills right here in Binghamton, working with the American Hockey League Rangers during his entire first season and came into training camp and head coach Mike Keenan didn't like the way that he was performing early out of camp so he played two games in Binghamton to start last season was recalled to New York never was sent back to Binghamton after getting a stern warning from Mike Keenan and lo and behold Zuboff would go on and lead the New York Rangers in scoring during the regular season obviously making huge contributions to the Stanley Cup run coming up on two minutes left in the second period tied at 3-3 here at the Broome County Memorial Veterans Arena in Binghamton New York the Rangers and Torpedo deadlocked in what has been a seesaw battle. One of the NHL caliber defensemen, as you get a look at, Matthias Nordstrom, he will turn 22 years of age one week from now. Scary to think that he's just 21 and he's developed so well last year, a, a rookie. Now in his second season, born in Stockholm, Sweden. Not your quote-unquote typical Swedish defenseman. Really likes to play the body. At 6'1", 205 pounds. He's also a plus 11 on the season. Has played very smart hockey this year. Very physical player. Rangers work it in, and Chervikov will have to play it. Nice steal by uh, Kudinov for the Rangers. But again, the Torpedo sends it back out. Nordstrom, one of the guys who would have found himself on the New York Rangers roster had the NHL season started on time, but with the labor dispute, his return to the NHL will be postponed. He already launched some games last year with the New York Rangers, but a very unfortunate situation up there. 
Foot it off, uh, shoots it wide. And a whistle. Looks like there'll be a penalty called. I think Scott Malone of Binghamton may get the call, or are they just going to call a faceoff outside the blue line? Looks Dave? like an offside call. Malone bobbled the puck along the far point, brought it over and back, and we mentioned what the labor dispute did for the likes of Matthias Nordstrom while heading off the bench you just saw Darren Langdon. He also created an NHL opportunity for himself by filling the skates of Joe Koser very admirably. Koser had shoulder surgery, was out. Darren Langdon fought the likes of Marty McSorley and others during the preseason. Probably would have found himself in the lineup uh, on opening day as well. And speaking of uh, shoulders, Dave, we were talking here earlier in the afternoon that Rob Kenny a real powerhouse forward for Binghamton, may be done for the season with a separated shoulder. And you know what? He was signed as a free agent at a Northeastern University, originally from the Bronx. Rob Kenny, one of those finds, kind of like a diamond in the rough. The Rangers did it with Stephen King, signing him as a free agent out of Brown. Rob Kenny out of Northeastern. The Rangers work very, very hard at finding those kind of players, led by general manager and president Neil Smith and assistant general manager Larry Plow. Their scouting staff works overtime and finds these guys somehow. It's amazing. Kenny out of Don Bosco High School in New Jersey had 11 points in 17 games. Likes to plant himself in front of the net, makes opportunities at age 26, 6'1", 205 pounds. But uh, remains to be seen if he'll even have a chance to be back for the AHL playoffs. Well, it's very unfortunate, too, because he's in the third year of a three-year contract, and he went down with a dislocated shoulder, had surgery, will probably miss the remainder of the regular season. It's going to be hard for him to get back into the swing of things in the final year of his contract. That could be devastating. Going head first into the boards for the torpedo. I believe that was Oleg Komisatov, and he has really shaken up. I don't think he's going to get up too quickly, Dave. He was caught off balance there, kind of went in a very vulnerable position into the boards, lost his helmet, and team doctor Andre Zeman makes his way off the Russian bench. Hopefully nothing too serious. Very clean game. A lot of times you'll see that in the uh, European style, as they say, the Olympic style. This ice surface here at the arena, up until this season, was just 185 feet long. During the summer, they lengthened it to regulation 200. And as a result, you see the, the difference as we now take a look at the Russians are coming hockey tour schedule. This game, the 10-game, 14-day tour right here in Binghamton. They will head to Dartmouth on the 27th. That's tomorrow. Then Salem State make their way through the U.S. Military Academy the day before New Year's Eve. And then also take on the likes of Harvard, Cornell from Division I college ranks, Hampton Roads from the East Coast Hockey League, and then three games against the Sunshine League All-Stars. That also is part of a tour through Florida, I guess, where they're going to play those three games in three different cities and also wrap it up with a big bash in Daytona Beach, Florida. So uh, the Russians, I'm sure, looking forward to the end of this tour. Oh, the Torpedo have not seen nothing yet, as they like to say, <laughs> down south. Not until they see Daytona Beach. <laughs> Komisarov does skate over to the bench. What's the closest thing to Daytona Beach in Russia? Well, maybe Chelyabinsk, if you ask. It certainly is not Siberia, that's for sure. Or Kiev. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up on 30 seconds to go in the second period. Loose puck in front. Kadosenko has Ram to go down, but then stick handles behind. Centering pass intercepted by the Rangers, and here comes Makash. It's a two-on-two. Two. 20 seconds to go in the period. Tied at three apiece. Two-on-two two for Russia. Kazayuk. Little deflection in front, and Ram does a good job to get his pad down with 10 seconds to go in the period. Defenseman Darcy Waranka got flat-footed there, just caught inside his own zone to create that two-on-one. And that will be the conclusion of the second period of play here. No damage done as Jamie Ram comes up with a couple of big saves in the closing moments of period number two. The yeah, Rangers and Torpedo tied at three. You know what, Paul? Unfortunately, we were right. We were saying the Rangers only had two or three shots through about the first 14, 15 minutes of the period. I made the comment, how long can Jamie Ram keep this up? Well, of course, it's just a matter of time when you got talented guys like this on the ice, and the Russians indeed battle back to tie the game at three. Jamie Ram did come up big with uh, under a minute to play here. You saw Darcy Waranka at the first part of that just get caught flat-footed. And Ram makes the save to preserve this tie. After two from the arena in Binghamton, the Rangers and Russians tied at three on the Russians are coming hockey tour from Binghamton, New York. To the season, made it a one-goal hockey game. And then Zadavai Heen with an assist to Zinin, his fourth of the season, tied this game at three apiece. 
25 to 14 shots on goal advantage for the torpedo and Jamie Ram could only do so much Dave let's take a look at that first goal we made the comment that Jamie Ram as you said could only do so much here shot taken makes the first save then a pass out in front Ram glancing around the net had to go post to post just didn't get there in time and the torpedo pull within one after that goal. At times it appears the Rangers have been a bit sluggish. I don't know if it's because they want to protect the lead or because they're just wearing out, but you'll see it again on the tying goal. You know what it's been? The Rangers have had trouble playing with a two-goal lead. Call it lack of a killer instinct or a finishing type play, but here, as you'll see, the torpedo did come back to tie the game. Scott Malone, the lone defenseman, back in a two-on-one, gambled and lost, and that one was tipped in. The goal going to Zadavahin, and this game is tied at three between periods here. We're between periods numbers two and three with a tie hockey game at three apiece. The sellout crowd here at the Room County Arena certainly been entertained to what I don't think they necessarily expected was going to be such a tight battle. Our colleague Roger Deal now talking with New Jersey Devils scout John Cunniff a former head coach in the Binghamton franchise with the then Binghamton Whalers alluded to the fact that Torpedo may have been a little intimidated in the first period as they got bumped around then they scored a goal fell behind three to one but continued to apply pressure at one point during that second period I think the Russians said wait a minute we're not out of this game we can play with this team and it's been a very entertaining game ever since Hiller Langdon and Kudinov open up as the forward line for the Rangers here and that's not their usual high-flying line that they'll open a period with Loose puck and now sent into the Ranger end. Stewart retreats, and he'll set up a play. Funny thing, though, the Rangers have such balanced scoring up front that there really isn't a top line, a second line, and a third line. I guess, arguably, you could say Makash, Juan, Duncan's in the top producing line, but then you've got such other contributors, it's hard to really break it down. The Torpedo opened up the game at 1-0, and the icing called against them. Face off back in the... Russian zone. Let's take a look at some statistics from the second period. Most notably, shots on goal. The Rangers only tested goaltender Alexei Chirbikov with five shots. They've got a two-period total of 14. They're being outshot 25-14. Rangers dominating in the face-off department. Both teams with one power play goal aside. Jamie Ram, the difference so far, holding the Rangers in this game. And in both cases, Dave, Ram came up with a ton of big saves early in the period, only to be worn down in the latter half. There's the face. Smith cannot control, and the torpedo try and work it out. Jernander keeps it in. Poked away by McLaughlin. Smith tries to control, looking to the left point. Can't get the pass over as the torpedo intercept, and they'll try and work it free. Possible two on one, and broken up there by Waranka. Puck to the right of Cherbikov. They'll just sit tight between the pipes. It's a steal. Backhander by Smith. Chervikov with a save. The Rangers with a good scoring opportunity. Smith was clipped on that play, too. Slow getting up. Does so, and will head to the bench rather gingerly. Actually, he's going to stay on, but Dave Smith's shaking up on that last play. Nice intercept by Sabalin. Cross pass and a quick wrist shot. Nice save by Jamie Ram. Dave Smith, number 11 for the Binghamton Rangers, signed as a free agent during the offseason from the Fort Wayne Comets. This is his third professional campaign. His first season out of Ohio State, he won a Turner Cup with the International Hockey League's Fort Wayne Comets. Last year, he was a losing finalist with the Comets as the Atlanta Knights claimed the championship. So Dave Smith has been both on the winning end and losing end of a championship team. That's why they went out and signed this guy, very feisty forward who adds a winning experience. Roman Kostraman with that quick snapshot. And Ram able to come up with a save to keep this game at 3-3. You know, it's funny, too, taking that a bit further. Dave Smith says he actually learned more losing in the finals than he did winning the finals. A lot can be learned in, in that experience. Here's a centering pass. A little backhand by Fiorentino, gloved by Cherbikov, and there'll be a faceoff. 17.59 to go in the third period. Our score, the Rangers 3, the Torpedo 3. Back to the Broome County Veterans Arena. After the Dave Miller back in Binghamton, New York, where the Binghamton Rangers and the Torpedo Yurislavl are tied at 3-3. 17.55 to go in the third period. It was a 3-1. Rangers lead after one. And then the Russians came back with two goals in the second, and that's where we stand. Good shot at six foot three inch, 210 pound goaltender Alexei Cherbikov for the 
Russian team. Rangers have only won one of their last five regular season games in the American Hockey League. They're one, three, and one in that stretch. You can throw out the fact that this is a quote unquote exhibition game. Binghamton needs to get back on the winning track to wind up the 1994 portion of their schedule. As they say, when the juices get flowing and you've got yourself a tie hockey game, suddenly uh, you want to win it very bad. Absolutely. Pinching up along the left board, centering pass. Starstenko can't tee it up, and here come the torpedo back at the center ice. Nice stick handling ability there by Amalin. And the Rangers break it up in front. Back the other way. Start a Stanko. Two on two if he wants it, then just flips it in. Up the boards, Kudinov digs. Trying to work it free is Nielsen. The pass deflected off a torpedo forward. And then the Rangers do eventually get it back in behind Cherbikov. The Binghamton Rangers just a bit slow again as we open this third period. Dave, the pattern has been there throughout the evening. Rangers three goals, all of them in the first period of play, so they've been held off the score sheet for about 25, 26 minutes as far as the game clock is concerned. And we mentioned during the intermission, Paul, that for whatever reason, Binghamton has had a real struggle in opening up a two-goal lead. As we mentioned, maybe call it the lack of a killer instinct. But unfortunately, that bug has bitten again tonight. Here's Duncanson from Akash behind the goal. Why now goes back there. Makash, little spin move. Avoid Shaldeben. Centering pass. Backhander by Wa goes wide. Makash with some excellent work here behind the net. Wa cannot tee it up in the crease with an excellent opportunity that goes. And when you're struggling, this is the combination to go to. Jean Ivra with a couple good opportunities created by Duncan Cinema Kosh, his hard work in the four checking zone. Back the other way, Zenin for the torpedo, ridden off the puck, and Langdon controls for the Rangers. 15.45 to go in the third period. The Rangers three and torpedo three. Puck intercepted at the blue line by Hiller. Langdon. Throws it over to Oranka, back to Langdon, and the torpedo intercept. Lead pass intended for Tarasenko. It deflects, and then Ram just pulls it aside. Tarasenko kind of gave up on that play, giving Jamie Ram the opportunity to keep the puck in motion, and that's exactly what he does as the Rangers bring it up ice. Back out to the blue line. Here comes Tarasenko again. Three on two. Drop pass for Trazayuk. Shoots wide. Zeeban behind the net, looking for Trazayuk in front. Nice job of controlling the puck, but then the Rangers steal. Back the other way, a three-on-three. Three. Good stick handling by Hiller, but nothing comes of it. And back the other way, Ram will have to touch up. Leaves it off for uh, Nordstrom, a very dangerous play there. As a torpedo was swarming in, that was Tarasenko. Rangers call for icing. New York Rangers president and general manager Neil Smith was looked at as a pioneer when he took Alexei Kovalov, the first pick in the draft back in 1991. It was the first Russian ever taken in the first round. And since then, guys have filed through North America. And I got to learn a lot uh, from guys like Alexei Kovalov and Sergei Zubov, who both honed their skills right here in Binghamton, a shot at Rangers head coach Al Hill. But the one thing that you learn that is a bit surprising is the fact that the National Hockey League is very visible around the entire world. It's a global hockey league. We heard between periods with Andre Tarasenko speaking with Roger Neal that his eventual goal is still to play in the NHL. At 26 years of age, it may be a very hard goal to reach, but the NHL's visibility, guys know what it is. Matthias Nordstrom in Sweden followed the NHL. Guys like Borja Salmik and guys in Russia followed the NHL. Very widely uh, known. Of course, Dave, right now, playing in the NHL means you're not playing. That's true. <laughs> That's absolutely right. Interesting story about Matthias Nordstrom and that situation, if we can get to it a little later. Just under 14 and a half to go in the third period. The Torpedo and the Binghamton Rangers are tied at three apiece. Paul Bettino and Dave Miller at the Broome County Memorial Veterans Arena in Binghamton, New York. The Russians are coming. Game number one of this two-week hockey tour. The intimate confines of the Broome County Arena, capacity 4,643. Uh, an official sellout here tonight, a capacity crowd enjoying this game. Graham with the glove up to indicate the icing. Stewart touches up. 
13.46 to go in the third period. The Torpedo 3 and the Rangers 3 back with more of the Russians are coming tour after these messages. Welcome back to the Broome County Arena where the Rangers and Russians are tied at three apiece. A very special midseason exhibition game. Starostenko from his knees out in front. And Jean Ypres got the shot up. One save made by Cherbikov. He came up with a couple of big saves to preserve this tie. Widely considered one of Russia's premier goaltenders at 29 years of age. He brings in a goals against average of just under two a game. So the Rangers already with three, they may consider themselves lucky. Rangers' magic number this season has been four. When scoring four or more, Binghamton virtually unbeatable. 17-1-0 and oh when scoring four or more. Malin flips it up the right boards, intercepted by uh, Kudinov. Rangers trying to get a center in front. Uh, Nielsen having all kinds of problems, then finally got loose, and by that time, the play had broken down. Jeff Nielsen's name has creeped its way onto one of the top prospects list as far as the New York Rangers are concerned. Probably one of the best prospects offensively for Neil Smith and the New York Rangers. Put it off digging with Shibidov behind the goal, and finally the torpedo clears the zone. You know, we talk about the New York Rangers, Colin Campbell, who coached the Binghamton Rangers a couple of seasons ago, taking over at the midway point after Roger Nielsen was released, is anxiously awaiting the opportunity to make his NHL head coaching debut and look to retain the Stanley Cup for New York Ranger fans. He's had the chance to catch a couple of Binghamton games this season. That's not one of them. Silverman pinching into the Russian blue line just a bit there and almost got caught up ice on the Ranger change. Lead pass for Gorshkov, misfires it. Back to touch, uh, Craig Duncanson. Could have been a very dangerous situation for Jamie Ram had that pass connected. A look at Craig Duncanson. He's lost some time with three different National Hockey League clubs. He was a first-round draft pick of the Los Angeles Kings. Also, a couple of seasons ago, had the chance to appear in a couple of New York Ranger games while they suffered some bumps and bruises uh, during a West Coast swing. But Michael Stewart there stepped up a pass that could have been a breakaway feed, ends up in the corner, and then the stoppage of play with a faceoff coming back. But Craig Duncanson, not just goals and assists. Yeah, he puts up the points but he's really the heart and soul of this club third season with the Rangers back in 1992 93 this club won an American Hockey League record 57 games and then dropped out of the playoffs early last year didn't make the playoffs and through all the ups and downs Frank Duncanson has been there here's Wall centering pass score the playmaker himself, as we mentioned, Crank Duncanson puts it on the tape, and Jean Yvois does what he does so well, buries it top shelf, and the Rangers retake the lead. 12-17 to go in the third period. The Rangers jump on top, 4-3 to three after their torpedo had two second period goals to tie it. Cherbikov could not get the glove up in time. Was second of the night, 21st of the season. Of course, these goals here tonight will not go on the regular season statistics, but still, Jean Yvois, 21 goals. He's also one of only three players on the Rangers roster to appear in all 35 games so far this season. So, Wah with 21 goals in 35 games. The time of the goal, 7-43. The Rangers lead the Torpedo 4-3 to here at the Room County Center. The crowd walk to life. Tarasenko tries to tie it in the slot but cannot as he fires wide. How is he left alone in front in a 5-on-5 five -five situation? And then a quick whistle. The Rangers get a break there. And a bit of a scuffle off to the left of Jamie Ram. 11.55 left 11 in the third. to go in the third period. Our score, the Rangers for the Torpedo 3. Let's check in how you can get some Torpedo merchandise. Really seem to make you go fast. <laughs> <laughs> At least from what we've seen tonight. Komisadov had a chance to tee it up. Hesitated, then Kratzokin tees it up. And Jamie Ram with another save. 30 shots on goaltender Jamie Ram. He stopped 27 of them as the Rangers... Hold on to this 4-3 lead. That's a shot from the point. No traffic in front, though. The Rangers defense doing a nice job to clear the alley. And as you can see, Ram saw the puck the entire way. Matthias Nordstrom doing a good job of keeping that lane clear. That time, Ram's glove just a bit quicker than Cherbikov's glove down the other way as the Rangers were able to take advantage. And they've got that 4-3 lead. Here's a slapper by uh, Komizarov. Did not get good wood on it. Ram had a sprawl in the crease. And it finally comes out of the zone. Tarasenko leaves the Rangers zone, shaking his head, wondering how he missed that open side. Granted, it was from a bad angle, but he is a sharpshooter. Tarasenko shakes it off. Shout deep in, forecheck there by Kudov. Back into the neutral zone. 
Ram will touch up behind the goal as Tuturapedo come closing in on it. And indeed, they wind up with possession. Tarasiuk shoots wide. Sobolev sends it behind the net, gets hit. And then the puck comes back out to center ice. Langdon, a two-on-two -two for the Rangers. Langdon, good move. Then body checked off the puck. And uh, losing his helmet was Dmitry Karasokin. Just under 11 minutes to go in the third period. The Rangers for the Torpedo 3. Darren Langdon playing very well as he ends to the bench in favor of a change. And as I mentioned, he has been over the past uh, couple of weeks. Lachlan. Good enough. Sends it in. Sticked aside by Jervikov. The Rangers had set up a nice play. Back the other way. Good play by Jernander. He's got a man if he wants him. McLaughlin streaking down the crease, and Jernander decides to hold. Sends it back to the left point for Silverman, and then dumps behind for McLaughlin behind the net. McLaughlin holds. He's got nobody in front. Then circling around is Jernander. No pressure, McLaughlin. Jernander hits the ice, and McLaughlin doesn't know what else to do with the puck. He had all kinds of time behind the goal. Here's Smith. Works it back to Silverman. Whips it around the boards. Chasing is Jernander. Good hard check to keep it in the zone. Smith chases, and then Stewart keeps it in the zone. Or no, out of the zone. Chance for a two-on-one by the Torpedo, but they cannot convert. Jernander can't get the blue line, and as a result, the Torpedo take over. Kind of surprised to hear that the Russians came to North America just yesterday. That long flight into Kennedy Airport and then stayed overnight in Newburgh, made a bus ride here. I mean, when you're going to go on a 10-game tour, you think they might want to come a day or two early. At least they pull in the eve before their first game on the tour. Hey, they don't look very tired this evening, that's for sure. The torpedo, or Torpedo Yoslavo, flying very high here in this third period, showing no signs of wear. The Rangers do have a 4-3 lead, and remember, when they had leads earlier in this game, they coughed them up because they were unable to keep up with the speed of the Russian team. Rangers four goals on 19 shots, not a typical outing as you alluded to earlier by big goaltender Alexei Cherbico. By no means has he played poorly. Jean Ivois with a couple of beautiful goals. Jim Hiller found a gift in front, sent it in the open short side. And uh, he hasn't played poorly, but his numbers take a beating here tonight. Stewart goes into the corner. Met there by uh, for the Shokin. Rangers are two on two. Akash takes it in. Good bit of stick handling. Looking for some help. Centering pass goes right through Jeff Nielsen. And Jeff Nielsen wants that one back. You can Shot tell. by Wah Wai. And it comes out of the zone. Nordstrom will have to touch up. Behind goaltender Jamie Ram. Both teams change on the fly. Here's McCosh. Duncan's it. He's got Nordstrom in front. Score! The Rangers lead 5-3. to three. What a pass from Frank Duncanson. You can't say enough about this team captain. He feeds Nordstrom in front. And once again, there's a perfect example of the goaltender Alexei Cherbikov being victimized. So the Rangers open a 5-3 lead. 8.09 to play in the third period. You're watching three unanswered goals. Then the Russians came back to tie. But Matthias Nordstrom buries that pass from Frank Duncanson. The other assist going to Sean McCosh. Duncanson and McCosh have picked up assists on each of the last two Ranger goals. Duncanson with a beautiful backhand pass, as you see. And we talked about Chervikov being victimized. There's another example. That's not his fault. Nordstrom was left alone, crashing in from the point. Buries it in the short side, and the Rangers have a 5-3 lead. 8.09 to go in the third period. McCosh with three assists. Duncanson a goal and two assists. Nordstrom with a goal and an assist. Once again, that steady scoring distribution continues. No real superstars offensively, but a lot of distribution. Hard for teams to prepare a game plan against the Rangers. We'll see if Jamie Ram can keep up his stellar play and goal for the Rangers and hold on to this two-goal lead. As you said before, they blew a three-to-one lead early on. Just over seven and a half to play. Kozakiewicz at the red line. Checked off the puck by Waugh. Ram has to play it by his goal. Leaves it off for Nordstrom. Good forechecking by the Torpedo. Zati Vahin and cannot keep it in. Have to see how the Rangers respond here. Over seven minutes to play in regulation. Two goal lead. Will they play a form of that neutral zone trap and leave three or four white jerseys at the red line? Try to shut the door. If they do so, that's where you might be able to see the Russian speed take over. 
Stewart pitching in. Keeps it in the torpedo zone, and now the other way. Alexei Trezayuk, right side for Tarasenko, gains the blue line. Good stick handling move, and nice play by Silverman to take him out. Carr, it's super move. Langdon, and he can't control. What a move from Jimmy Hiller, and then unselfishly puts it out in front. Langdon couldn't finish the play, but a great play by the tandem of Langdon and Hiller. Drop pass for Tarasenko. Trezayuk control, centering pass. Trezayanko tripped up in front, and Ram gets lucky that Tarasenko did not get a stick on that one. He would have had an excellent opportunity. 6.20 to go in the third period. The Rangers lead the Torpedo 5-3. To Here's Langdon up the left wing. 3-2 on two for the Rangers. They gain the blue line. Centering pass for Kudinov. Loose puck in the slot. And I believe the goal's going to be waved off. It crossed the line. Goaltender Alexei Cherbakov not happy that he was bowled into. And immediately, before the goal even goes on the board, it comes off. So, Andre Kudinov with that one waved off in front. What a transition that Kudinov has made over the past year. You'll see him from in tight get the backhand shot off as he pulled it out in front. Last year, Kudinov had real problems adjusting not only to the North American style of play, but to life off the ice in North America as well. This year, I know his wife, Elena, has been involved in volunteering at the local YWCA chapter. His young son, Kirill, just two years of age, also attending a Kids' Corner program, uh, hanging out with American kids, if you will. They have become much more comfortable with life off the ice in North America, and as a result, uh, Andre Kudinov also knows what to expect on the ice. He's played very well. That was a quick whistle by uh, Mike Lego, because I'll tell you something, Dave, it looked to me as though Jim Hiller did poke that puck in from the slot. Sure did. 5.55 to go in the third period. 5-3, to three, the Binghamton Rangers over Torpedo Yoslavl. And the first game of the Russians are coming exhibition series here in North America. Can't even imagine what some of those Europeans go through when they come over to play in North America. At such a young age, Sergei Zubov came here at 21 or 22 years of age, didn't know a lick of English, didn't know how to play the game. And look at how far he's come now. What a challenge for those kids. Rangers keeping the pressure on now, contrary to what they did with the two-goal lead earlier in the game. Here's pinching, uh, Durander pinching in. Centering pass in front, doesn't go through. Worked up along the near boards. Kostramin fires it out. Smith took a whack at Kostramin, who leaves the ice limping. Kostramin hurt on the play. Dave Smith taking a slash at him inside the zone. Rockland chips it in. The torpedo regroup, and there's a pass that goes all the way down. It'll be an icing. 4.56 to go in the third period. The Rangers 5 and the Torpedo 3. A look at Jeff Nielsen in his rookie season from the University of Minnesota where he led the Golden Gophers in scoring last year. Real feisty forward. A Rangers fourth round pick in the 1990 entry draft is paying dividends early. It's hard for a rookie to make the adjustment, especially to the long 80 game schedule. So we'll see if the schedule takes its toll later in March or April. Right now it's not though. Nielsen playing very well. Nielsen at six feet, 175 pounds. He's 23 years old. Puck poked out into the neutral zone. Chasing was Gorshkov, but cannot get there in time. So the Rangers send it back into the torpedo end. The guy we were talking about, Jeff Nielsen, also played one season collegiately with Rangers teammate Ken Jernander, also out of the University of Minnesota. Quick shot by Gorshkov, stick wide. Chopping out of this Kudinov, trying to get it out of the zone, and then the Rangers finally do clear. Chervikov has to field it with a stick, sends it up to the blue line. Wad just sends it back out with a whack. Here comes Gorshkov, he's got a chance. Drop pass for uh, Kostokin, and uh, once again, there's Jamie Ram. You know, the most difficult challenge, at least on paper for Torpedo, on this 10-game tour starts right here in Binghamton. The schedule does get a bit easier after this. Nice quick shot by Komisarov. The Rangers 5, the Torpedo 3. 3.59 to go in the third period. You're watching the Rush Room County Arena in Binghamton, where the Rangers have a 5-3 lead, thanks in part to number 34, Jamie Ram, with 31 saves. There's the 31st. As he robs of Lyacheslav Kadoshkin from point blank range. And in the process, number 5, Matthias Nordstrom, picked up a two-minute penalty for holding the stick. So the Russians pick up a power play 
And the next goal, obviously a big one. If Torpedo can cut the Ranger lead to one, they'll be right back in the game. And if the Rangers, of course, open up a 6-3 lead at home, they can start the bus and head north. Once again, the Rangers blew a 3-1 lead in the second period when the Torpedo came back with two goals to make it a 3-3 game after two. Let me clarify that head north comment. Uh, Torpedo's next game tomorrow in Dartmouth, Hanover, New Hampshire, their destination. And they've had great weather, too. I wonder if they really believe that uh, December's are this mild in the United States. The Torpedo taking over. 1.23 to go in the Ranger penalty to Nordstrom. Quick shot. Kedoshkin, uh, the one who had the shot earlier. Out to the right point. Platsokin controls. Left point. Komisadov. They work it down low. Tadosenko whips it around the boards. Coming up on a minute left in the Ranger penalty. This is where the Europeans are so strong, and namely the Russians. Their puck control with a man advantage, unparalleled. Silverman knocks down the centering pass, and the Rangers flip it out of the zone. Although Binghamton is doing a pretty good job. 50 seconds to go in the penalty, 2.45 to go in the third period. Rangers very strong in the shorthanded category, thanks in part to these two guys, Dave Smith and Ken Jernander up front. Smith has a team leading three shorthanded goals this season. Centering pass for Zibin, can't get the puck to go through, but the Russians do control. Zibin chips it back behind the net. Tarasenko muscles his way for it. And we shot off across for Kletsokin, fires, and then a goal! Don't. The Torpedo have cut the lead to 5-4, and don't anybody go home yet. Vladimir Samalin. I was going to say, don't start that bus just yet. Don't count Torpedo out of this one. It's a power play goal. There was still 24 seconds left in Matthias Nordstrom's penalty. Shot taken from the point was redirected in front, and then the eventual goal buried by Vladimir Samalin. Another angle from ice level. Samalin on the backhand. Kind of a wild shot. He just spun through it toward the net, and as you mentioned earlier in the broadcast, that's what coaches tell you, especially on the power play. Hey, put some shots on goal. You never know what's going to happen. Samalin with his second of the night, 13th of the season, makes this a one-goal hockey game. So Nordstrom comes out of the box, and with 2.16 to go in the third period, the Rangers 4 and the Torpedo, or Rangers 5 and the Torpedo 4. Back behind the net. We'll see if the Rangers can apply some pressure. Sometimes the best defense is a good pressured offense. What an entertaining hockey game. Seesaw battle, a roller coaster ride from the opening faceoff. Lead has changed hands on a couple of different occasions, and again, the Russians threatening. Samalin kept it in the zone with some nice stick handling. Pinching up along the right boards. Zativahin digs. Samalin digs. And Zativahin fires wide to Rams' right side. There's a quick shot by Kratzokin wide. 1.30 to go in the third period. Torpedo putting on a lot of pressure, too, at this stage. The Rangers lead 5-4, to four, and it looked like Chervikov was going to come out of the goal, but then he quickly came back in. I don't know why, because at that point, the puck was going back towards the Rangers' end. He'll be leaving soon. 1.14 left in regulation. Here's Nordstrom gaining the Russian zone. Wah centering pass. Can't control. And back the other way, the Torpedo. 1.05 to go in the third period. Chervikov still in goal. Centering pass covered up by Ram. One minute left in the third period, and the Rangers lead 5-4. to four. Now, that was a surprise that Chervikov didn't follow the play up the ice earlier. I understand why he slid back into position, but with exactly one minute remaining, it looks like the Russians will probably use their 1.30-second timeout and take their starting goaltender out. There's a look at the Rangers' starting goaltender, Jamie Ram from Michigan Tech University, where he played four seasons with that college hockey team. Scoring by period, Rangers fell behind 1-0 in the first, but battled back to score three unanswered goals. Rangers had a 3-1 lead after the first period. Torpedo scored the only two goals in the second period, 3-3. And now the Rangers have outscored the Russians 2-1 here in the third period, 5-4 our score. A look at the Russian bench and head coach Sergei Nikolaev in his 14th season behind the bench. Started playing in Chelyabinsk, as I mentioned earlier. Andrei Kudinov's. Hometown. And while we have a, uh, a minute, Paul, I'd like to mention and acknowledge the fine work that Sportsmakers Agency has done, led by Jay Goldberg, bringing this 10-game, 14-day tour to the United States. This game here kicking off that tour. Jay Goldberg working very hard. Also, I'd like to thank our producer, Ken Harris, doing a fine job on the telecast as well. 
The Torpedo will be going to Dartmouth tomorrow, then Salem State on November, or not November, but December 30th, they'll be at West Point against the Army Cadets at the Tate Rink. So as we mentioned, really on paper, the biggest challenge this team will face is the opening game of the tour, and they've responded pretty well. It's just a one-goal hockey game with one minute to play. Look for Andre Tarasenko, the captain, with 31 points, the leading scorer for Torpedo. And Jervikov is back in the net with a face-off in the Ranger zone. I don't Can't understand. figure it out. I don't understand that at all, especially after calling the timeout with a face-off way down at the other end. 45 seconds to go in the third period. Homie shot off controls for Kratzokin. Lead pass up the left boards, and Zativahin is bumped down. Good check by Fiorentino. Punishing hit from Fiorentino, making the Russians pay the price. 30 seconds to go. The Rangers gain the zone on a three-on-three. -three. Paul, I don't understand this at all. The goaltender still between the pipes. They, of course, can pull him in favor of an extra attacker. And you know what? Alexei Cherbikov isn't even looking at the bench. He's not going anyplace. 15 seconds to go in the third period. The Rangers control with a 5-4 to four lead. Watch out for Tadasenko, number 10. Five seconds to go in the game. Here's Tadasenko with a possible chance. Saved by Ram with one second to go, and there's the buzzer. The Binghamton Rangers have held on to defeat the Torpedo Yoslavo, five to four. Wow, what a finish as Andre Tadasenko had a last-second shot. We told you not to leave early. And in frustration, Tarasenko slaps his stick on the ice after the possibility of scoring the game-tying goal. His name was held off the score sheet, at least in the goal column, and that's a big feat for the Rangers. He obviously very frustrated at the final buzzer. What I don't understand is the goaltender didn't leave the net until there was five seconds left. You were probably following the play, Paul, but the goaltender actually did leave, so Cherbakov was pulled with a mere five seconds remaining. And the customary handshake, the international flavor, a great game. Fans treated to an outstanding contest here tonight as the Rangers beat the Russians 5-4. The Rangers out shot by the Torpedo, 37 to 21. Jamie Ram has to be very happy with this performance. As you mentioned at the top of the broadcast, he came in at 5-4-1 and one in his first year with the Rangers, fifth in the AHL in goals against average at 287. And certainly today, despite giving up four goals, he has to consider this a very positive experience. Very, very entertaining game, really, from the... Opening face-off as Torpedo makes their way to the dressing room. Still at center ice, though, Tarasenko talking with Starastenko. Mixed the letters up, I guess, and you got the Enkos chatting in the neutral zone, fellow countrymen.